Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a very simple macro solution. In this case we're going to use it to select a state but it could be expanded or adapted to any sort of data that you want to enter into a worksheet. Now I'm here in sheet one where I've already put in the states of the United States and they're in column A here from row one to row 50. I've also got sheet two and in sheet two is where the data is going to go. So we've got the heading state and we're going to put the state name in the cell and we're going to do it by selecting it from a list. Now I've already saved my file and it's really important that when you save it, you give it the XLSM extension. So you need to select an Excel macro enabled file or this is not going to work. Now I'm going to the developer tab. If you don't see the developer tab, you're going to go to file and then options. And then you're going to customize the ribbon and you're going to make sure that you add the developer tab. So you're just going to click to enable it and then click OK. And this will give you the developer tab on the ribbon. Here you can get to the Visual Basic editor. So we're going to click on Visual Basic. Now I'm just going to quickly clean this up. So I'm going to select my worksheet here and I'm going to choose insert and then user form because I need to add a user form here. This is the form that's going to pop up when we select it. So I've got my toolbox which keeps walking out of the way. Let's just get started with that. We're going to put in a label here and then we're going to add a list box. So I'm going to click here on list box and add a list box that's going to have scroll bars in it to make it a little bit more usable. And then we want a couple of buttons. So I'm going to click on command button and I'm going to drag out one command button and then a second one. So once you've got your elements on the form, you can start to work with them. So I'm going to click on my label. I'm not seeing my properties window, so I'm going to click to view it. And for the label, I'm going to its caption property here. So I'm just typing select state and click OK. And that's just going in as the label. For the command button, the first of them, I'm going to give it a caption. Its caption is going to be OK. And then for command button two, its caption is going to be cancel. And for this one, for the cancel property, we're going to make that true. That just means that if we were to press the escape key, then whatever is behind the cancel button will be executed. Just saves a little bit of effort. Now in here in the list box, we have to specify what's called the row source. And the row source is where is the data for this coming from? So it's coming from sheet one. So I'm typing in sheet one and then an exclamation mark and then it's coming from row A1 or cell A1 through to cell A50. And you'll see that immediately that my list box is populated with this data. Now the other thing that we need to change here for neatness is this user form. Up here we're going again to its caption property. It's still called user form one, but its caption is going to read state chooser. So we've got this little form that we've created that we can use to select a state within the workbook. So we're pretty done with the properties, but we need to add a little bit of code here. And the code that we're going to add is behind these two buttons. So first we, we're just going to double click on the cancel button and you'll get this dialog open that just says command button to click. And this is where we specify what happens if we click this button. And what we want to do is just exit everything. So we're just going to type unload space me. And that's all the code that we need behind this cancel button. So now I'm going to click away from the cancel button. And I'm going to double click on OK and that gives us the exact same setup for our OK button. Now for this we need to put the chosen state into the worksheet. So what we're going to do is say active cell dot value equals list box one dot value. Now one of the things to be aware of is as soon as I press enter, some of these characters are going to have uppercase letters instead of lowercase. And that's a really good way to check that everything's working correctly because if 
Excel doesn't recognize what you've typed, it won't make it capital. So that's telling me that this list box value, whatever it's pointing to, is going to be placed in this active cell. Now, once we've actually put the list box value into the cell, we need to close everything down. So that's just unload me. So we're going to put that in here too. And you can see I'm typing in lowercase letters. As soon as I hit enter, everything goes into uppercase because Excel understands what it is that I'm typing. So we've got all the code we need to run this form. We've got everything we need except a way to actually show the form. So let's go and do that now. And for this, we need a module. So I'm just going to click here on insert and we're going to insert a module. Just make sure that in the project window, it's going into this project here, not your personal XLS file. You don't want it to be there. It needs to be in the file that we're working in. So what we need to do now is to just create a very simple macro that's actually going to run this. So the way we do that is we're going to type the word sub and then a space and then this is going to be the macro name. So no spaces but you can use underscores. I'm just going to call this state chooser and then open and close bracket. And as soon as I do that and press enter, you'll see end sub appear. And that's just a marker for the end of the subroutine. It should appear automatically, just leave it in. Now, what this needs to do is simply show the form. So it's just a one line of code and it's user form one dot show. And again, as soon as I press enter, I get the capitalization telling me that Excel at some level at least understands what it is that I've just typed. Now I'm going to save this. I'm going to just hide my macro editor, my Visual Basic editor, and on my worksheet, I need to be able to actually run this macro, and I'm going to do it from a button. So I'm back here in the Developer tab. I'm going here to Insert, and I'm going to select a button. So here it is in the Form Controls. I'm just going to click this button. Don't choose the ActiveX controls, we're just going to add a form control. So I'm going to click on this button. I'm going to drag out a very simple button into my worksheet. Now I'm asked, what macro do I want to assign this button to? Well, what I want to do is find the macro in the US States macro workbook. So I'm just selecting that and I'm going to click here on State Chooser and I'm going to click OK. So this button is now attached to the macro inside this workbook. Now I'm also going to right click this and choose edit text because I want to change the text on the button. And I'm just going to click away. So the basis for this now is that I'm going to click in a cell and then click to choose my state to enter into this particular cell. But I am going to click the save button so that this is all saved to disk before I run it. So let's click to choose the state and here is our state chooser. And we can just scroll down to choose any state that we like. I'm going to click on Mississippi and click OK. What will happen then is that the word Mississippi will appear in this cell here and the form, this little dialog here, will close and disappear. So I'm just going to click OK. And that's exactly what's happened. Now, the word Mississippi is going into that cell. It's not linked to anything. So what the form is doing is it's just selecting the data and inserting it in the cell. It's not linked to anything. It's just a word like any other word. Now we can go over the top of it by just selecting that cell again and choosing a different state. This time I'm choosing California, but we can add a state to any cell. So you just click the cell and then choose the state that you want to add and click OK. Now let's test the exit. So let's click to choose a state and let's decide we don't want to put in a state. So we're just going to click cancel and then we just go back to normal. There's nothing in the cell. Let's do that and let's choose a state but not actually enter it. And now I'm just going to press escape on my keyboard. And because I set up that form to be responsive to cancel, just pressing escape just fires off that unload me command. So it behaves exactly the same as if I click the cancel button, just pressing escape. So that's a very simple macro that will allow you to choose data from a range in Excel. And as I said, 
this sheet does not have to be visible so we could hide it if we wanted to and the entire process is going to work exactly as it did previously. You can use the same principle to set up your own user forms to enter whatever data it is that you want to enter into a worksheet or of course you could do exactly as I've done and just set it up to enter the US states as the user requires. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results every time, then you'll love my other YouTube videos. So give this video a thumbs up and click to subscribe to the channel. And on the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you to watch next.